All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on cryptocurrency every single day. My name's Austin, and guys, thanks for checking in today. We have a great video for you. I want to start by taking a look at the market. All right, as you can see, uh, we are up in the last 24 hours, We're seeing very some very positive, small but positive signs as Bitcoin, the altcoins, they're all in green today. And the market cap is sitting at $217 billion. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we're up over 10 billion. So over $10 billion entered the market. We see that right here with Bitcoin and the altcoins. Bitcoin up 3%, um, we're at $6,700 for Bitcoin. Uh, it used to be at 6400 somewhere around here. Um, and then, of course, it went up. So Bitcoin gaining 3%. Altcoins like Ethereum, XRP, EOS, Stellar up 2%, 2%, 3%, 1.5%. 1 so in general, that big influx of cash that we saw, Bitcoin took the brunt of it. You know, Bitcoin gained the most. These altcoins uh, gained minimal amounts, but it still shows that these altcoins are being drained. Uh, while Bitcoin dominance um, gets gets greater. And we see that right here. Bitcoin dominance is at 53.5%. Wow. It was just last week we saw Bitcoin dominance at 51%. And about a month ago, it was in the high 40s, 49%. What do you guys think that means? Well, it could mean a lot of things, but let's just, let me show you guys one aspect. I want to put this in perspective for you guys. After all, that's why you subscribe to the channel for some perspective on the market. And I want to look at what we've seen with Bitcoin domin dominance historically. So check it out right here. As we said, right now, the orange represents Bitcoin dominance. These things represent altcoin dominance. And right now, Bitcoin dominance is at 53%. And... Of course, this is all the end of the year bull runs. This is uh, January 2015, 2016. This was our big bull run at the end of the year 2017. And historically, at those end of the year bull runs, the altcoins all see new all time highs, new all time highs, new all time highs. Well, check this out, guys, because right before in the months leading up to these all time highs, Bitcoin dominance uh, increase, increases and the altcoins get drained. Then, of course, everything sees all-time highs. With the bull run, Bitcoin dominance increases. The altcoins get drained. Uh, new all-time highs. And then, of course, we all remember last year, Bitcoin dominance increases. The altcoins get drained and drained hard. And then we saw all new all-time highs with every single altcoin. With Bitcoin as well, even though it lost dominance, everything gained. What do you guys think about that? Bitcoin dominance is growing right now. These altcoins are being drained. Is this, you know, the months leading up to our new upcoming end of the year bull run? It could be. It could be. Obviously, it's based on a number of things. I have a few news articles for you uh, about the daily happenings of what is going on with crypto now. But if we just look at this one aspect historically, it means that we are on track for the next major bull run. I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Um, but let's get to these news articles. And again, if you're getting any value out of today, uh, make sure you go ahead and like the video. Just, just helps me grow as a channel. Check this out. JP Morgan is targeting millennials. Uh, takes on Robinhood with upcoming launch of commission-free Uinvest. This is right out of the daily hodl. Um, JP Morgan wants those millennials. We definitely understand that. JP Morgan is unveiling its new Utrust service next week. The digital investment service will be available on desktop and mobile. And the and it's for trading. They want to capitalize on millennials trading. And the goal is to give customers 100 free stock trades within the first year. So to uh, get some, uh, to acquire more clients, they're going to giving out 100 free trades initially for the first year. And as people sign up for this, you trust account holders with at least $15,000 or more, will earn 100 free trades each consecutive year. But let's just say you use up your, fir your uh, 100 free your first year and you don't have at least $15,000 um, in your account. Customers 
whose balances fall below the threshold will pay the standard $2.95 per trade after using all of their free trades. And to put this in perspective, currently TD Ameritrade charges about $7 per trade and Charles Schwab charges $5 per trade. Of course, compared to JP Morgan's Utrust, $3 per trade. So in that sense, they are staying competitive. But um, really, you invest appears to be in part a response to Robinhood. Um, that's the one the crypto community knows the best, uh, the leader in mobile trading. Do you guys know Robinhood? Well, a quick recap on why they are on top. Robinhood has captured nearly 4 million users since launching their commission-free trades in 2013. And they're available for mobile-friendly customers. The Robinhood app allows people to buy and sell stocks on the US exchange. And the fintech startup, which surpassed E-Trade in total number of brokerage accounts, launched Robinhood Crypto earlier this year. That's really what put Robinhood on a lot of our radar. Um, that effort is designed to serve its mobile-friendly user base of millennials, who represent a large demographic for trading cryptocurrencies. Guys, if there's one thing, if there's three things that we know about millennials, it's what? That's right, it's that they love avocado toast, they love Jammin and Taylor Swift, and they like investing in cur cryptocurrency. They see the value in this emerging market, and obviously Robinhood captured on that, or is ca in the process of capturing that um, with Robinhood Crypto, uh, but JP Morgan has their own response, you invest. And JP Morgan's new you, JP, JP Morgan's new you invest service will be immediately available to all its 47 million mobile or online customers, and it signifies the bank's strategy to remain number one in the US by staying competitive with millennials. And I'm gonna put this in perspective for you guys, but just so you know, this isn't just JP Morgan. Amazon, uh, rumors have it that Amazon is trying to leverage its millions of Amazon Prime members who are largely millennials to move into different verticals, including banking. Amazon might move into uh, financial services. Um, so it's not just JP Morgan. What do you guys think? Will this work? Well, in my opinion, you know, JP Morgan, you invest, it is definitely competitive with TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab. You know, once you get past those 100 free trades, uh, these trades are way cheaper. Two dollars is way cheaper than six or four. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow, a little half cough. Uh, way cheaper than those. Will will it be competitive with Robinhood? Well, J.P. Morgan, you invest has not said yet that it will be investing in cryptocurrencies like Robinhood crypto, uh, which definitely will be a reason millennials would join. But Ro I'm not on Robinhood, so let me know in the comments. But with Robinhood, they're all free trading. I think. And with JP Morgan, it's only going to be free if you have $15,000 or more. Well, if there's one thing about millennials, you know, not a lot of us have $15,000 because all these college loans and avocado toast. So I'm not sure if it's going to be a good enough competitor to Robinhood. We will see. Let's move on. Two more news stories for you guys. Uh, this one, I want to talk about the future of the Bitcoin price. CNBC's analyst Brian Kelly, BK, Crypto enthusiast himself says Bitcoin ETF approval uh, will likely not be this year, will likely be in February 2019. Crypto analyst Brian Kelly has predicted that approval of the Bitcoin exchange traded fund ETF will likeliest and earliest come in February of 2019. And as we know, it was recently delayed till, uh, as we know, it was recently delayed until September 30th. And Brian Kelly saying it's going to be delayed again. It will not happen this year. And um, I wonder why, Brian Kelly. Why do you say that? Kelly pointed out that while the SEC has recently chosen to delay its decision on the VanEck uh, Solid X uh, ETF until September, uh, the regulator, in fact, has the option to again defer it. And he's saying it will and it will happen in February at the latest. And he suggested this would happen based on a few things. Let's go over that. And first off, let's read a direct quote from him. When the SEC, so the when so they delayed it uh, in part because the market's too volatile, too prone to fraud manipulation, and the SEC can't really control something or protect the American people from something that's global, that's used around the world. Um, they can't protect that from fraud and manipulation. But Brian Kelly argues 
when the SEC talked about fraud and manipulation, it wasn't so much about preventing it, but how do they surveil it? Interesting. Do they have an, arran do they have an arrangement with other globally or nationally regulated exchanges that would enable them to surveil what's going on? So one of the big reasons they delayed it is because, I mean, we're assuming, um, is because that um, they can't they can't really control that fraud and manipulation. The market's too small, too volatile. Uh, it spreads too wide around the world. And he's saying they don't have to control it. They have to surveil it. And that may happen um, by next year. And then people, some people say that, wow, well, we, had traded, we started trading Bitcoin futures uh, last year. Uh, e An ETF is next. And Brian Kelly has a response to that. Uh, th he then affirmed the SEC's argument that the existing Bitcoin futures market is not mature enough. And he pointed out that he remembered that Bitcoin futures were only launched on major US exchanges, CBOE and CME last December. So very too, too early, um, yet still, it was less than a year ago uh, for ETFs to get involved. And here's another direct quote. Here, CME futures open interest of large, here's, here's CME futures open interest of large holders. As of April, you're starting to see a big increase, about an 85% growth. Since April, you know, and these futures were launched in December of last year, an 85% growth rate. If you ex if you extra extrapolate that out by February of 2019, you're gonna have a very robust market here. So seeing, he's saying now in September 30th, it's very early, but it is growing. We are in an 85% growth rate. Um, as of April and by February of next year, um, the market's going to be even more robust and more of a positive sign that the ETF will get approved. That's what Brian Kelly says. You know, a lot of people uh, that speculate that are more knowledgeable than me say that it will also get delayed again, will not get approved this year. Let's take a look in the market and let's put it in perspective a little, a little bit. This is Bitcoin as it stands right now. And... Yeah, this is Bitcoin in the last roughly six months. And if we take a look before our big bull run last year, we can see it. Yeah, it's, you know, if one year ago, Bitcoin was kind of at 4,300. And really in September, Bitcoin slowly started to increase, increase slow and steady, up, 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 up until that major bull run. And of course, from looking at this chart right here, we know that while Bitcoin was slowly increasing, up, 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 the altcoins were getting drained lower and lower. Well, same thing happened in at the end of 2016. Bitcoin very slowly kept going up, 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 up. People didn't know, would it shoot back down? But it didn't, and then at the end of the year, we saw a big bull run. As we know, the altcoins got drained as Bitcoin went up. So I wanna turn it over to you guys. What do you think? A lot of you guys are waiting for Bitcoin to go down to 5K or 4K or 3K. And the answer is we really don't know. You know, are you prepared if Bitcoin slowly just keeps creeping up, creeping up to 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, and it does not dip back down? Have we taken out all the positions that we wanna take out? Um, because it could just keep creeping up slowly. And uh, you know, it will launch when you least expect it. I think we can all agree on that. Um, that's just a little perspective historically. Again, I guess this video is more about that historical perspective. It is, of course, based on many different things. But what do you guys think in the comments? The last thing I want to bring to you guys is, many of you guys may not know this, but while my brother and I, we live in LA now, we grew up in Ohio. You know, high school, college, we were Ohio boys all the way. And Ohio lawmakers pitched their state as a future hub for blockchain. I want to click, quickly clue you guys in with just three short sentences, and then we're going to do a little call to action. At least I am. Um, lawmaker in the, US, in, the, in the US state of Ohio, the Buckeye State, say that they are interested in blockchain, but they're still figuring out a way to put that enthusiasm into action. At a press conference on August 23rd, Ohio, State, Ohio House of Representatives Speaker Ryan Smith convened a group that included lawmakers, business owners, academics to discuss the Buckeye State intent to attract both blockchain developers and companies. And while there's no specific uh, legislation to, related to blockchain that was proposed, 
So nothing official yet. Smith said that he saw the technology as a widely as a as widely applicable in the public sector, including use cases like the storage of birth certificates and marriage licenses in order to make those kinds of data more secure. And he says, because this is so new and this is just the beginning to take shape, we can position Ohio out front. And guys, I know you guys don't care about Ohio. I grew up there um, and I care a little more, but we all care about blockchain and the future of cryptocurrency. And right now, when you think of Ohio, what do you think of? You think of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You think of the Cleveland Clinic. You think of Drew Carey himself, the three biggest things out of Ohio, maybe LeBron James. Um, but Ryan Smith, he's trying to be a leader in the blockchain summit. And whether the hub of blockchain comes in Ohio or New York or California or maybe, you know, England or Australia or Canada, we don't know. Ryan Smith is one of the good ones. I'm going to give him a follow. I want to stay up to date on what he's doing and I'm going to send him a little tweet. I want to, him to know the crypto community is behind him. Hey, uh, what's his at speaker? Um, R. Smith, the crypto community supports you. Um, hashtag um, crypt, crypto. Guys, this is just me. This is something important to me that I'm doing. If you guys want to tweet at Ryan R. Smith saying that you support his endeavors to make bring crypto into 2018 and beyond. Uh, give him a tweet. Uh, I'm tweeting at him right now. Tweet. Maybe go ahead and just give my tweet a like so he sees it. Either way, if you want to follow us, you can follow us at at Altcoin Daily IO. Uh, link in the description below this video. But that's all I got. These three articles and of course us putting the market in historical perspective. Guys, I hope this video provided some value. I'll let you guys go. Have a great weekend. This has been myself, Austin Arnold, and this is Altcoin Daily. We'll see you tomorrow.